Wow, look at this. Standing room only. This is awesome. Hello, and thank you for joining us today at our newly opened campaign headquarters. We are so excited and honored to welcome you all to this space to celebrate our successes. Although today is a day of celebration, we know that we cannot rest until every young person in Seattle King County has a safe and stable place to call home. We owe this to our youth, our most important asset. Now I'd like to welcome Zachary DeWolf to the stage to honor our Native American ancestors. Thank you, Lamont. We live and serve in a city that is the ancestral homelands to the Duwamish people, the Muckleshoot Nation, and the Suquamish Nation. We acknowledge them as custodians of this land since time immemorial. As guests, and as in many of our cases, as settlers on this land, we extend our deepest gratitude and respect to their ancestors and elders, past, present, and future. Thank you, Zachary. So my name is Lamont Green, and I work at All Home as the senior manager to the End Youth Homelessness Campaign, which is our region's collective effort to ensure that every young person in Seattle King County has safe and stable housing by June 2021. Our region has made significant progress towards reducing, reducing youth homelessness with a 28% decrease in 2019 among youth and young adults and an incredible 52% decrease among youth under 18. Additionally, our youth homelessness demonstration program alone has diverted from homelessness or stably housed over 200 young people since its launch in October 2018. Now is the time to cross the finish line, to move from managing the crisis to effectively ending homelessness among youth and young adults in King County. Government cannot do this alone. Our providers cannot do this alone. And philanthropy cannot do this alone. It's going to take all of us, our entire community, working side by side, youth and young adults, to get this job done. Now I'd like to turn it over to my co-MC, Liz Castro, to talk about what, it truly, what truly makes this campaign different. Hello, hello. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Okay, hello, hello. Okay, this is better. Hi, so thank you, Mal Lamont. <laughs> my name is Liz, and I'm a member of All Homes Youth Action Board. Um, so some of my fellow board members are here in the audience today. Um, I see Talia, a former board member, and I see Miranda back there, and I want to see Aja somewhere. That's okay, Aja's somewhere. Um, so yeah, so our board's role is to co-design the system response to youth homelessness, and we, young people who have or have currently, or are currently experiencing homelessness, are also co-decision makers. And that means that this work is for young people, by young people. And young people experiencing homelessness are disproportionately people of color. Black African Americans are 34% compared to 6% of the general population in King County. Latinx are 20% compared to 10% of the general population. And American Indians slash Alaska Natives are 10% compared to less than 1% of the gener general population. And youth, young adults identifying as LGBTQIA+, are also overrepresented in the homelessness system at 34% compared to just 4.8% of the general population. That's a lie, we know there are more um, in the region. <laughs> so we know that if we really want to end youth homelessness, we need the young people most impacted leading the change, leading the charge. Because when the system is safe and affirming for the most impacted young people, it will be safe and affirming for everyone. So I want to invite all youth and young adults who have experienced homelessness to please join me on the stage now And our Youth Action Board members. So this group and many other young people in our community will be the reason why we end youth homelessness. So let's give them a round of applause again. <laughs> Woo. Thank you so much. 
Awesome. Thank you, Lise. So, the campaign, so now I want to ask the Functional Zero Action Team to come on stage. Our Functional Zero Action Team. We have Marcy, Vishesh, Brandon. Awesome. So these are the folks that are really going to be getting the job done on a systems level in the weeds of this transformation and right sizing. <laughs> um, so the campaign has an ambitious and achievable goal of effectively ending youth homelessness by 2021, also known as Functional Zero. Functional Zero is achieved when a community has a system in place so that all youth and young adults falling into homelessness can be housed in 30 days or less. The team behind me is the Functional Zero Action Team, made up of staff from All Home, King County, and the City of Seattle. They are the people working diligently to ensure that our system is responsive to the needs of young people experiencing homelessness so that we reach our goal of achieving Functional Zero by 2020. And now I'd like them to briefly introduce themselves and their role. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vishesh Jain and I'll be working as a data scientist for the campaign. I'm Brandon Luck, I work for King County's Coordinated Entry for All team as a referral and operations specialist. Zachary DeWolf and I'm working specifically on student and youth student homelessness work group and our upstream King County pilot project. Hi, I'm Leanna Crescent, I'm an intern. <laughs> <laughs> From UW School of Social Work. Yes. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Marcy Kurt, and I work at the City of Seattle as a planner for homeless youth. I am John Paul, and in charge of technology and communications. Good afternoon. I am Latrice Donahue with All Home King County, and I am the project program manager three for Youth Homelessness Administration <laughs> Project Implementation and the In Youth Homelessness Now campaign. Hi everyone, I am Talia. Um, I am the Youth and Young Adult special Engagement Specialist. Nice, thank you. Uh -uh. Uh. And Talia is one of the founding Youth Action Board members. If we can give her a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Let's give a big another round of applause for our Functional Zero Action Team. Thank you all. Hello, hello. I am very excited about our next introduction. Maven Gardner is a published poet and social justice advocate from South Seattle. They also served as a, actually hold on, we're gonna give a round of applause to the South Side. Whoop, whoop. Spectacular. <laughs> and <laughs> they also served as the 2016 to 2017 Seattle Youth Poet Laureate. So please help me welcome Maven to the stage. Nice. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to share a poem with y'all, if that's all right. Um, this uh, piece I'm going to share um, has a lot to do, well, disclaimer, I write mainly about black and brown bodies. That's where my passion lies, and that's how I identify um, as an African American. And so, yeah, my poem I'm going to read is titled Nutmeg. Um, and it's just it's from the perspective of um, the mothers that we have here um, in America who have lost their, their young ones. <coughs> Rehearse your lines until you know them, like the ones folded in your mother's forehead as you leave home in the morning. Like a melody ringing in her ears, like her prayers, her yearning, bring my baby back home safe. All together, brown bodies say, whoever is policing the skies, watch over our sons. They're vital to the growth of our gardens, their seeds we planted aimlessly at first but never regretted. Something about mama and her love, it was heavy. Like the eyes of the world layered upon your nutmeg body, it was heavy like today's breakfast. She made sure to weigh down your belly because all too quickly you could lose your spirit in daylight. How would she catch you? All too quickly you could lose your spirit in daylight. She packed your plate as if eggs and grits could serve as ankle weights. If her baby ate good today, he'd return again. If her baby ate good today, then at least he didn't die hungry. No one could say mama didn't feed her baby. He had a full stomach when she sent him on his way. But now, she's stuck in place. 
They're pushing her baby into soil, final prayers embedded in his face. She screams, you can't bury my son. He's not meant to shine from beneath my feet. It seems like this world is killing us with an urgency. I didn't prepare to bury a life that came after me. Just bring him back up. He had plans to caress sunsets from balconies. Matter of fact, I think we'll just go home. His clothes never made it in the hamper. I still got some grits left over. I could weigh him down. Maybe I didn't weigh him down enough. He knew his lines like he knew my worry. He knew his lines like he knew what this world does to nutmeg bodies. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Maven, that was powerful. Our next speakers have consistently used their positions of leadership and their presence of leadership to champion effective strategies for addressing homelessness across the region. Serving his third term as King County Executive, Dow Constantine leads one of the largest regional governments in the United States. His priority is that every person be able to thrive, be economically secure, and contribute to the life of our community. Mayor Jenny A. Durkin is the 56th mayor of Seattle and the first woman to lead the city in nearly a century. She entered office in 2017 with the challenge of making Seattle affordable and inclusive for all. Their support for the campaign and its goals, as well as their commitment to radical collaboration, are critical pillars of the campaign's success. Please welcome King County Executive Dow Constantine and Mayor Jenny Durkin. Thank you, Lamont. Thank you. Well, I'm thrilled to be here with Mayor Durkin and many of our Very strongest thrilled. partners. Yes, we're discussing who's going to talk first. Uh, uh, in tackling the crisis of homelessness, youth homelessness, in our region. Uh, Pearl Jam's uh, home shows last year, and thank you Mike and Stone for being here today, uh, really showed the region and the world a united effort to raise awareness and understand the needs of our neighbors across King County who are experiencing homelessness. It helped galvanize business and philanthropy and residents of all ages from across our region to contribute time and money to tackling the homelessness crisis. Now, one of my focus areas is, in, in particular, the fight to help young people. No child or youth should ever experience homelessness. And it should go without saying that housing, secure housing, is essential for health and for well-being and for success in school and success in employment. And even a brief period of homelessness can be devastating. We've seen that, and we've seen that when we work together, we can make a real difference. For four years in a row, uh, fewer families with children have been homeless in our region. And recently, we've even seen drops in youth and young adult homelessness. And we have partners like the Rakes Foundation and the Schultz Foundation and the United Way to thank for contributing to that progress, but it was no accident, it was no fluke. Uh, to reduce youth homelessness, we combined resources and we leveraged the goodwill of our community, bringing together hardworking local government teams, some of those folks you saw here today, uh, service providers, uh, young people with lived experience in homelessness and how, uh, and by bringing all of these folks together, we are in fact making a difference. I hope you get a chance to see the facility we have here today. I'm a real believer in uh, creating a physical space for us to, to be able to do work together. And this is a manifestation of our commitment to collectively take on this enormous challenge of homelessness and particularly youth homelessness. We need to continue to approach this work as a community because we know that no one entity is going to be able to achieve alone what we can accomplish together. And that's what today's announcement is all about, creating a highly responsive system that efficiently and effectively manages resources for youth and invests in the strategies that work. So with urgency and with resources, we will make even greater strides on our journey to ending youth homelessness. Mayor Durkin.
Thank you so much. Um, good morning. It's still morning. You can say good morning. good morning. So thank you. Thank you, Lamont. Thank you for the, the young folks who stood up here. Um, I'm not going to make you do it again uh, or even stand up, but I want to say a couple of things. One, thank you for your courage. And two, I'm sorry. We've let you down. Um, we as a society, we as a city, we have let you down. The grown-ups have let you down. <laughs> I've got a lot of facts and figures here. You know what they are. We have way too many people experiencing homelessness in our region, way too many. And we're here today to talk about those people that we know if we can't make it better, then there is no future. If we cannot end homelessness for our youth, we have no future. And we look at the data, and some data I show tells us a lot about who we are and who ends up on the street. Nearly a third are LGBTQ. Nearly a third. Nearly a third have been in the foster care system at some point in their life. Far too many young people of color. And those things reflect the other failures in our society. So we need to recognize that. We need to own it. We need to recognize the systemic racism that has pervaded every system that we have and how children have been the first to experience that, to feel it the most deeply, to end up on our streets, to suffer every day, just trying to make a place for themselves. So I want to thank the Rakes, the Schultz, the Pearl Jam, the executive, everyone who's here together to say, not only can we do better, we must do better. Yes. We must do better, and we will do better. But we can only do that by empowering the youth themselves, by listening to looking for those things that actually will make a difference. We know what they are, and we as the adults have the obligation to fix them. So that 10 years from now, we don't have more courageous youth standing up here saying, it's time to do better. We'll have them up here saying, I'm going to be, fill in the blank, the greatest poet in America. Mm. I'm going to be a rocket scientist. I'm going to be whatever I damn well want to be, pardon my French, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but that's where we are and that is what this is about. We talk about what we do as government, how we're going to have one entity to fix it, how we partner with business and community and the sound community and, and everybody. But really what it comes down to, the humans, the people, the hearts. That's what we have to change. We will change the systems, but with that we have to change the hearts. I'll end with one last thing. I was interviewed earlier today. It's Pride Week. Yay, it's Pride Week, right? And uh, the reporter asked me, so tell me a story about coming out. And I thought to myself, which of the hundred times? Um, because you, you know, so many times. But that's the same thing. If you're a youth experiencing homelessness, not only do you carry what's on your shoulders, whether you're uh, a kid of color or you're gay or whatever, but just to be able to tell your classmates or your friends or wherever you are that you don't have a home over and over again. We got to end it. We got to make it better. We owe it to our children, but we owe it to ourselves in our future. So thanks for everything. Lamont, who's next? <laughs> uh, who is next? You know, Trisha Rakes. Trisha. <laughs> Thank you so much. So thank you, Executive Constantine and Mayor Durkin for your words of support. Um, our next speaker is the co-founder of the Riggs Foundation with her husband, Jeff. The Riggs Foundation works towards a just and inclusive society where all young people have the support they need to reach their full potential. She was also recognized as a White House Champion of Change by, presi by President Barack Obama for her work on youth homelessness, a woman of influence by Puget Sound Business Journal, a humanitarian superhero, <laughs> by Parent Map and was awarded the 2017 Ginger Ackerley Community Service Award by the Seattle Storm. So please welcome Trisha Riggs to the stage. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to thank the young people for being here. You are our inspiration today. And just having your presence here is so important to all of us. I'd also like to thank Mayor Durkin and Executive Constantine for being here for your courageous leadership 
and also deeply caring about our young people. We really appreciate you being here. So the Riggs Foundation has been working to prevent and end youth homelessness for over eight years. But we feel this campaign is really the start of a genuinely different phase of this work. Deep coordination and coordinated ownership on the part of our public partners, philanthropy, business, our service providers, and our young people who bring the lived expertise is what our community needs to address homelessness. The End Youth Homelessness Now campaign is exactly the type of coordinated action that we need to make progress. And this commitment to ensure that there is a home for every young person in King County is not that far from becoming a reality. It's exciting to see our efforts already together are making a difference for our young people. Now we know even though the data is imperfect, we do believe that the 63% drop in homeless minors over the past two years of the point and count uh, does reflect a very real trend. And we are hopeful that the drop in the number of homeless young adults this year will also be sustained. Those trends are due to the Herculean effort of everybody in this room, and we do think that's cause to have optimism and hope. But it is now time for us to double down. We know what works, and we need to ensure that those young people that are most vulnerable are really taken care of. Our LGBTQ youth, our youth of color, the Native American young people that are still far more likely to experience homelessness. That has got to change. So let's challenge ourselves to not rest until our efforts end those inequities and result in real justice for all of our young people. You know, too many of our young people exit the juvenile justice system the child welfare system, and our mental health facilities, and end up homeless. So let's challenge ourselves to listen to our young people, what they've been telling us for years. And we need to dismantle those pipelines to the streets. You know, the truth of, the truth of it is, to really end homelessness, it will take much more than simply responding to young people once they experience crisis. We absolutely have to work upstream to prevent homelessness long before it happens. If our young people, as Jenny said, are still telling us 10 years from now their horror stories of aging out of foster care and ending up on the streets or being arrested because they have nowhere to stay, we have utterly failed them. And failing our young people is not an option. We do still have a long way to go before we find everyone, every young person in King County, a place they can call home. But when I look around this room, we can get this done. We're going to have setbacks. It's not going to be easy. But if we stay the course and we let the data and the voices of our young people guide us, we have a shot at being the first uh, area in the nation to reach functional homelessness for youth. So I want to just mention the Rakes Foundation, we will be here every step along the way. We see our role as bridge builders to innovative practices, and we are here to challenge, but we are also here to support really important improvements to the system. We believe innovation is a really important part of the solution set, and we're eager to partner with all of you to solve this problem together. We are also grateful for the support of others that have come along to invest in this support. That would be Pearl Jam, The Home Shows, Lee Rhodes and Glassy Babies, and we especially are grateful to the Schultz Family Foundation and the Campion Advocacy Fund. We have partnered with both on youth homelessness efforts across our country, but we are very committed to ending youth homelessness together right here in our hometown. 
We do know full well that philanthropy is only a small part of the equation. And that is why it's imperative that our communities stick together and get this job done. We need to do this for our young people. When we prevent youth homelessness, we not only ensure our young people get a shot to live lives full of hope and promise, but in many cases, we are also preventing a lifetime of chronic adult homelessness. We are saving our neighbors years of pain and trauma, and instead letting them live lives with agency and dignity. So today, the commitment from the city, the county, and all home, we are one big step closer to getting this right for our young people. So I wanna thank everybody for being here today, for your deep commitment. Let's make this happen. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. And I think the DJ needs to turn up some music because next we're about to welcome um, the, if we consider the, the youth and young adults the heart of this work, our providers are truly the muscle of this work. And our next speakers are two of our provider partners who also serve on the Joint Committee for the End Youth Homelessness Now campaign. Aaron Fox is the Senior Director of Young Adult Services for Accelerator YMCA, the social service arm of the YMCA of Greater Seattle. For over 20 years, Aaron has dedicated his career to providing services to youth and young adults experiencing homelessness in King County. He takes a strength-based approach to his work and strongly believes in the idea that participants are the leaders of their own lives. Dr. Melinda Giovengo, who we all know very well, became the executive director of youth care in November 2006, rejoining the agency she had served as a case manager and program manager for more than 20 years prior. She has 30 years of experience in developing and implementing re-engagement programs for out of school and homeless youth. Melinda serves on All Homes Coordinating Board in addition to the Joint Committee for the End Youth Homelessness Now campaign. And I will also add, she is a fierce advocate. <laughs> so let's welcome to the stage, Aaron and Melinda. Well, hello, I am, I am honored uh, to be here. I have to say that this is another one of those moments in the journey to end youth homelessness that you know, we can put a pin mark in and say, here's where we move forward together. As I've said, I'm Melinda Javingo. I'm the CEO of Youth Care. And Youth Care was founded in 1974. It was one of the first shelters to serve runaway and homeless youth on the West Coast. Since then, we have expanded to 14 sites, and we serve over 1,500 young people a year, far too many. The can't, I am honored to join you here today, and especially with Mayor Durkin, uh, Executive Constantine and, and Trisha and all of the other philanthropies in here because this is a community where we have come together. This is a community that does value children. And this is a, a community that does value their future. And we are so lucky to have all of these people in our midst behind us with wind, you know, the wind making us move forward. And I really want to thank Lamont for everything he's done over the past year to bring this day to fruition. The campaign is going to showcase... Yeah. I will say we don't always agree, but you know, that, that's to be given. This campaign is going to showcase our unity. It's going to keep our young people at the center in, of our efforts and our passion. These 40 years, youth care has identified and this community has identified and tested national best practices to empower young people to move beyond homelessness. From an emergency shelter bed, hot meals, job training, staff and career coaching, stable housing, and the unrelenting presence of hope and justice, success includes customized plan for each young pe person, and that is the way we are gonna end youth homelessness, one young person at a time, attaching to their future, their goal, and their vision for their life. Like Natalie, who was a teenager who had been exploited and had addiction and landed at youth care. Traumatized, but de determined. And with consistent support from safe adults and consistent adults, she finished high school, achieved her AA degree, and starts at the University of Washington this fall. Yeah. That's what we're after. Not just the low-hanging fruit, 
but the vision on a dream for every young person. Trisha and I were just talking about our own kids and their lives, and that is the wish for every child and every young person in this community. There are thousands of more young people just like that that I could share, and each young person is worthy, full of hope, and has a story that is yet to unfold. We have made great strides to address the crisis of homelessness in our community, but we have so much more to do and build and work on together and to ensure that every young person can truly achieve the stability and their opportunity to thrive. So let's get this started. No music, come on. Let's get this started, and thank you. And I'm so thrilled to be able to share the stage with Aaron. Goodbye. So hey, everybody. As you heard, I'm Aaron Fox. I'm the Senior Director of Young Adult Services with the Accelerator YMCA. I've worked with uh, youth and young adults for over 20 years, and I've been a, uh, most of those years I've been working with folks who've been experiencing homelessness. Uh, we've seen a lot of progress over these years, but it's nowhere near enough. Uh, the End Youth Homelessness Now campaign is one of the most successful ways that I've seen our community address youth homelessness, and that's because we're all coming together. And that's a theme that we keep hearing, though, but as a service provider, it's, it really is true. We've come together, and not only with the city, the county, the young people, the service providers, the philanthropists, everybody has, has joined together to actually try to meet this goal that we have. Accelerator Y has several programs that have been successful due to innovation and collaboration with several partner agencies within King County. One, of the, one example of that is the YET program, that's the youth engagement team that is geared towards serving 12 to 17 year olds that are experiencing homelessness. This program holistically meets the needs of the community of the youth experiencing homelessness by, by providing therapy, housing location services, and legal support. I want to share a quick example of how this program works. So we had a young person, 19 year old, I'm gonna call her Sharon. She came to our resource center and uh, was trying to get some services. She met with a case manager, and that case manager immediately connected her to the YET program. Once she met with that case manager, she found out, we found out that she had two younger siblings and a mother who had a King County housing voucher but was not able to get into the, any housing because she had some medical bills that she had to pay for first. The YET program was able to connect her to housing, to, to an apartment, help with some uh, funds to get into that apartment, and now they are all stably housed. That's a prime example of how not only a program. <laughs> that's a prime example of how we as a community have come together. Came through youth housing demonstration project money, partnerships with different service community providers, and we all collectively are trying to adjust, uh, address this together. We know there's a lot more work to be done. Like I said, there's a theme going on here. There's a lot more work to be done, but we are, we are, we are improving. You, the numbers show that we're improving, but the numbers don't tell the whole story. We gotta look beyond the numbers and we gotta understand that these numbers are not actually accurate as we'd like them to be. There's a lot more people that are not voicing their, their selves and letting us know that they're homeless and they need assistance. A as I end, I wanna say thank you to the city of Seattle city, uh, and King County for effectively partnering with us service providers to provide these services. I want to thank all of my partner agencies that are here today that we've worked with over the last several years that, to address this issue. I mostly want to thank the youth and the young adults for effectively voicing your needs and most importantly for being there for one another. You guys really are. Your, your generation does it better than anybody else has ever done it as far as being there for one another. I encourage you to continue to do that and let us help you because that's what we're here for. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Melinda and Aaron. Oops. We, uh, I know this is kind of a dangerous point. <laughs> awesome. As we regain our spacing. <laughs> is it your turn? Oh, it's my turn. Oh. Technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so the End Youth Homelessness Now campaign was sparked uh, from investments from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Developments, uh, Youth Homelessness Demonstration Program, and our community was one of the first awardees of 5.4 million. And across the nation, we have seen significant decreases in our efforts to end veterans' homelessness and uh, chronic homelessness. And a lot of what we're leveraging in this campaign are those best practices. And so now, I would like to introduce you to one of our federal partners, Katie Miller. Uh, Katie Miller is on the National Initiatives Team at the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness. She works across the Western US to bridge efforts to end homelessness in states and communities with the policy work that is taking place in Washington, DC. 
through the Council's 19 federal member agencies. Katie is based in our lovely Seattle, Washington, and has worked with local leaders to design and implement innovative solutions to homelessness for more than two decades. Please help me to give Katie Miller a very warm welcome. I was told I needed to dance. I wasn't prepared for that. Um, I'm so excited to be here today um, to hear from such incredible leaders to talk about how our partnerships are critical um, to the work to end homelessness. At USICH, we often say that the magic sauce um, that we see in communities who are ending homelessness is when there is true alignment and coordination at the local, the state, and the federal level. It will take all of us working together. In Washington, D.C., we are working very hard with our federal partners to address the policy barriers and provide guidance and support to communities that are doing this very hard work. A year ago, USICH and our 19 federal partners um, released Home Together, and this is the federal strategic plan to prevent and end homelessness. Uh, the plan calls out many things, but in particular, it calls out key things that you're working on here. So strong local collaboration, setting and being accountable to ambitious goals, bringing the voice of people who are experiencing homelessness to the center and front of the conversation and the planning, and ensuring the creation of affordable and safe permanent housing solutions for people exiting homelessness, and most importantly, um, hitting and looking at the issue of racial inequity head on. Uh, many communities will be joining King County as a youth and ho um, as part of the youth homelessness demonstration um, sites in the next few years. Um, as Lamont mentioned, King County was one of the first and we have many coming online. But they are looking to Seattle King County as a leader and as a model. You've been testing innovative approaches and working across systems and working with urgency to end the crisis of homelessness for all young people. Uh, we look forward to the, um, continuing to support your work and I'm very excited um, about what there is to learn from this work. So thank you. Thank you, Katie. Very nice. Thank you, Katie, for your, for your amazing continued support. <laughs> so thank you, Katie. We are excited to partner with you in this work. And thank you to all of our speakers, not only who shared, um, so all of our speakers who shared, not only for your powerful and important words, but also for your commitment to the work ahead. And thank you especially to the young people who could be here today. And yes, yes, big round of applause. And um, if the All Home team can come to the stage really quickly, because these are the people that on days where I just want to give up and I'm so frustrated, um, but actually keep me sane. Um, so if our All Home team can quickly come to the stage. Um, our director, Kira, who is amazing and supports innovation and really encourages us to, to do our best. And uh, I'm just going to have every per each person introduce themselves really quickly. Uh, you want to start, Kira? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Kira Zylstra, acting director for All Home. Go this way. Zachary DeWolf, program manager. <laughs> Latrice Donahue, program manager. Jean-Paul Yafali, program manager. Talia Garcia, the Youth and Young Adult Specialist. Trina Van, Program Manager. Hi, Danielle Winslow, she, her pronouns. I'm the Assistant Director. <laughs> uh, hi again, uh, Vishay Jain, Data Scientist for the team. Let's give a big round of applause. <laughs> um, so again, we are so humbled and honored to do this work in partnership with you all. And uh, we ask that you please stick around, check out the space, get a sticker, get some cupcake, get some candy, and I will be in the back of the room for questions. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, big shout out. You guys wanna come say something? Come on, come on. Yes, I mean, this, 
Pearl Jam has been amazing. It's been their investments along with the Rake's initial investments that has really made this campaign possible. So huge thanks to Pearl Jam. Uh, it's an honor to be here. This is amazing. So thanks for uh, including us in today's uh, event. And uh, Mike and I are, are thrilled to be uh, part of this uh, collaborative and uh, loving event. So thank you so much for everyone. And uh, thanks to the mayor and Dow for um, collaborating. This is awesome. So. Thank you. Oh, we have one more thing. Latrice has uh, someone won the prize. We need to. P oh. Okay. Uh, so if you want to participate in the drawing of the prize, see Latrice. We have cupcakes, candy, and I'll be in the back for questions. Thank you all again for being here.